Let's discuss single entry system by answering problem 15-12. So, Lancer Company provided the following data obtained from the single entry records of for 2019. So, the company is using the single entry system. So, it does not use the double entry bookkeeping or the debit credit system. So, under the single entry system, we do not use a complete set of accounting books. So, we only use several books which may include cash receipts and cash disbursement books. But a complete set of accounting books that includes general journal and general ledger with its corresponding subsidiary ledgers, those are seldom used under the single entry system. Since we use the cash receipts and cash disbursements book, so we may assume that a company using the cash receipt and cash disbursement books uses the cash basis of accounting when recording business transactions. Here, we are presented transactions from the cash receipts books and the cash disbursement books. So, the requirement is compute the net income or net loss using the single entry method and prepare an income statement. So, the net income or net loss that we are required to compute is the net income or loss that is under the accrual basis of accounting. So, since we are recording transactions in a cash receipt and cash disbursement book, applying the cash basis of accounting, we need to convert the transaction so that we can compute the net income or net loss under the accrual basis of accounting. So, based on the requirement, we need to compute the net income under the single entry method and prepare an income statement. Also, if we prepare the income statement, we may also compute the net income or net loss. These Two methods, they may be different in determining the net income or net loss, but still, both methods should arrive at the same net income or net loss. So first, let us compute the net income or loss using the single entry method. So how do we compute the net income or net loss using the single entry method? That is by using the accounting equation assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. So, so since net income is a component of equity, we may determine the net income as a change in the capital accounts. So net income is an increase in the capital account and net loss is a decrease in the capital account. So to get the increase or decrease of the capital account, we need to determine the beginning and the ending balances of the capital account. So how do we determine the ending and the beginning balance of the capital account? So this is the use of the assets and liabilities presented to us in the problem. So we have a list of several items of assets and liabilities with beginning balances and ending balances during the year. So using these account balances, we can determine the beginning and ending balance of the capital account by using the accounting equation asset is equal to liabilities plus equity. So here, I have transferred the account balances in on a table format. So on the left side are the asset accounts and on the right side are the liabilities and equity accounts. So, there is a color coding so that we can easily determine the left side and the right side of the table. So, now these are the to total assets and total liabilities and equity. So, by in so to determine the change in the equity, we need to determine the difference between the assets and liabilities. So first, get the total assets at the start and ending of the year. So the total assets at the start is 
then the total assets at the end is 6,880,000. Total liabilities at the start is 2,120,000 pesos. While total liabilities at the end is 1,600,000 pesos. So from here, we can now determine the equity balance at the end and at the start of the year. So the equity balance at the start is 3,880,000, while the ending balance is 5,280,000 pesos. So by comparing the ending and beginning balance, we can see that there is an increase of 1,400,000 pesos. So the 1,400,000 pesos does not necessarily mean a net income. Because aside from net income, there are transactions other than net income that may affect the capital account. For a sole proprietorship and a partnership, other transactions may include investments and withdrawal accounts. While for a corporation, common transactions may include dividend declaration. So first, let's look for other capital transactions during the period other than net income. So let's go back to the problem. Based on the problem, by looking at the transactions in the cash receipt books, we have an investment of 600000 which is a transaction affecting the capital accounts. Also, in the cash payments books, we have a withdrawal of 400,000 pesos, which is also a transaction affecting the capital account. So, we only have two other capital transactions during the year. So now, let's go back to our Excel. So now, let's compute for the net income by squeezing the net income using the T account. In this T account of equity of the company, we have a beginning balance of 3,880,000 pesos. So this is the beginning balance. Then we have an ending balance of 5,280,000 pesos. Then based on the problem, we have a withdrawal of 400,000 pesos, which is, of course, a debit to equity. So this is withdrawal. Then we have an investment of 600,000 pesos. Of course, investment is found in the credit side of the equity. So based on our T account, the ending balance should be 5,280,000. But if we get the total of the debits and credits in our T account, the total credit is 4,480,000 and the debit is 400,000. So the difference between 4,480,000 and 400,000 is 480,000 pesos. So this is the balance. However, we must have an ending balance of 5,280 pesos. So from 4,080,000 pesos, we need to have an ending balance of 5.28 million. It means that we need to have an additional credit of 1,200,000 pesos. Now, we can now assume that this is the net income of the company, 1,200,000 pesos. So to check whether the net income is 1,200,000 pesos based on our accounting equation, the equity has increased by 1,400,000 pesos. So what are the transactions included in the 1,400,000 peso increase? So there are two transactions which increase the equity of the company. The investment of 600,000 and 1.2 million of net income. So the total increase is 1,800,000 pesos. Then we have a withdrawal of 400,000 pesos, which is a decrease in equity. 
Therefore, 1.8 million increase minus 400,000 pesos decrease will result to 1.4 million net increase in capital account. So, therefore, and using single entry method, the net income is 1.2 million. Now, we will prepare the income statement. So, in preparing the income statement, we can check whether the 1.2 million net income that we have computed under single entry method is correct. So, in the preparation of income statement, we need a detailed income statement which includes the nominal accounts for the year. So the nominal accounts that we need must have a balance computed under the accrual basis of accounting because the income statement that we must prepare in the preparation of financial statement is under the accrual basis of accounting. So how do we prepare an income statement under the accrual basis of accounting? So based on this amounts, these transactions, we must reconstruct the journal entries of the company. So now, since we only recorded cash transactions, inflows and outflows, let us reconstruct these transactions in a journal entry. First, let's prepare the journal entries for cash receipts. So if you notice, these transactions are all cash receipts. So when we prepare the journal entry, the cash account is always debited for all of these transactions. So let's start with the 3 million pesos. It says 3 million pesos is a cash collection, so debit cash. Then this is for the collection of accounts receivable, which is after sales discounts of 100,000 pesos. So, we have a debit to sales discounts because sales discount has a normal balance of debit, 100,000 pesos. And our credit is accounts receivable for 3,100,000 pesos. Next is the collection of a note receivable. So, debit cash, 960,000 pesos then credit notes receivable. Next is a cash sale of 800,000 pesos. Debit cash, then credit sales. 800,000 pesos. Next is collection of 80,000 pesos for rent. So debit cash, credit rent income, 80,000 pesos. Next is the sale of equipment for 120,000 pesos. So debit cash, 120,000 pesos. The equipment has a cost of 200,000 pesos and a carrying amount of 100,000 pesos. So in, our, in my journal entry, I will record the direct recognition of equipment at carrying amount. So I will no longer use the ac accumulated depreciation so we can easily prepare the financial statement since there is no accumulated depreciation here in the account balances. So might as well record the, the recognition at carrying amount. So credit 100,000 pesos equipment. So this is the carrying amount. Then the selling price is 120,000 pesos. Then the carrying amount is 100,000 pesos, which means we have a gain on sale of equipment for 20,000 pesos. Then lastly, under cash receipt, we have a 600,000 peso cash collection, which is an investment to the company. So what is our credit? So what is the business structure of the company? company. So, Lancer Company, based on the transactions, is a sole proprietor. Because of the, we have a withdrawal transaction, so we can assume that the company is a sole proprietorship because withdrawal is only used under a sole proprietorship or a partnership.
So, Credit Lancer Capital. So, these are all the transactions under the cash receipts. So, cash is always on the debit side. Next, let's record the transactions recorded under recorded in the cash payments book. So since these are cash payments, cash account is always credited. Let's start with a collection of accounts payable. So accounts payable, debit, credit cash, 1,520,000 pesos. Then collection of notes payable. So debit notes payable, then credit cash, 1,280,000 pesos. The next is cash purchases. So debit purchases, credit cash, for 600,000 pesos. Next is payment of interest expense, 160,000 pesos. So debit interest expense, credit cash, 160,000 pesos. Next is expenses. So debit expenses, credit cash, for 800,000 pesos. Next is equipment, 400,000 pesos. So this means we have a purchase of equipment during the year for cash. So debit equipment, credit cash, 400,000 pesos. Then last transaction affecting cash is the withdrawal for 400,000 pesos. So let's use the Lancer Capital account. So we debited directly the Lancer Capital account so we, because we assume this is a permanent withdrawal. So debit 400,000 pesos. Then credit cash. So all of these are cash payment transactions. Now, let's transfer all these journal entries in our table. First, let's transfer the collection of accounts receivable. So debit cash, 3 million, sales of 100,000, and accounts receivable, 3.1 million. So debit cash, 3 million, credit accounts receivable, 3 million, 100, then debit 100,000 for sales discounts. So next is collection of notes receivable for 960,000 pesos. So debit 960,000 pesos, then credit notes receivable. Next is cash sales of 800,000 pesos. So 800,000 pesos, then sales. Next is collection of rent income, 80,000 pesos, then rent income. Next is collection of sale of equipment. So we debited cash of 120,000 pesos, then we credited 100,000 pesos for the carrying amount of equipment, then we have a gain on sale of 20,000 pesos. Next is investment of 600,000 pesos. So debit cash at 600,000 pesos, then Lancer Capital for 600,000 pesos. Now let's transfer or post the cash payment transactions. So first is payment of accounts payable for 1,520,000 pesos. So negative 1,520,000 pesos and negative 1,520,000 pesos under accounts payable. Next is payment of notes payable for 1,280,000 pesos. Next is cash purchases of 600,000 pesos. So this is purchases. Next is payment of interest expense for 160,000 pesos. 
So this is interest expense. Next is payment of expenses. How much is the expenses? 800,000 pesos. Next is acquisition of equipment for 400,000 pesos. So negative 400, then debit equipment, 400,000 pesos. Then last cash payment transaction is cash withdrawal of 400,000 pesos. So negative under 400,000 pesos, then negative Lancer Capital. So after we transfer all the journal entries for cash receipts and cash payment transactions on our table, let's check whether the beginning balance of our cash after we add all cash receipts and deduct all cash payments will equal to 1,600,000 pesos. So to reconcile 1,200,000 pesos, then after the effect of all transactions, the balance is 1,600,000 pesos, which is our ending balance of cash. So which means it reconciles the cash account. Now, after we post all transactions affecting cash, let us look for other transactions that are non-cash. So let's go back to the problem. So on our problem, we have an additional information. These are accounts receivable of 120,000 pesos were written off as uncollectible. Returns of 320,000 pesos were made on merchandise sales. Allowances of 80,000 pesos were received on merchandise purchases. Now, let's prepare the entries for these transactions. So first sentence, accounts receivable of 120,000 pesos were written off as uncollectible. So the entry is debit bad debt expense for 120,000 pesos. So the debit is to bad debt expense because we do not assume that the company uses the allowance method because there is no allowance for doubtful accounts. So that is why the write-off is directly recorded as a debit to bad debt expense. Then, since the transaction says that it is a write-off of accounts receivable, oh, so we must credit the accounts receivable for 120,000 pesos. Next is, returns of 320,000 pesos were made on merchandise sale. So these are sales returns, so debit sales returns for 320,000 pesos. Then credit 320,000 pesos to what account? The question is, are these returns came from sales on account or cash sales? So obviously, the sales returns are related to sales on account because we cannot assume that these sales returns came from cash sales because if there is a sales return related to cash sales, there should be a cash refund to the customers. So when there is a cash refund to the customers, there should be a corresponding entry recorded under the cash payments for cash refunds to customers. But since there is no a cash refund transaction under the cash payments, so we can assume that these sales returns have no corresponding cash refunds. So th this means these are related to sales on account. That's why the credit is accounts receivable. The last sentence is, allowances of 80,000 pesos were received on merchandise purchases. So these are purchase allowances. So record purchase returns and allowances for 80,000 pesos. Then debit 80,000 pesos. So what is the account debited? Is it cash 
or is it accounts payable? So we debit cash if there is a cash receipt or a cash received from the supplier for the allowance. So this means this is related to a cash purchase. But we debit accounts payable if the return is related to a purchase on account. So the 80,000 is is it related to a cash purchase or a purchase on account? So obviously this is related to a purchase on account. So instead of debiting cash, we debit accounts payable. Again, we cannot debit cash because debiting cash means there is a cash receipt received from the supplier for the allowance. And cash receipt should be recorded in the cash receipt book. So there are no cash receipts transactions recorded here pertaining to cash received from suppliers for allowances. So it means that this purchase allowance is related to purchases on account. Now, let's transfer these three journal entries in our table. So first, let's transfer debit budget expense then credit accounts receivable for 120,000 pesos. So debit 120,000 pesos for bad debt expense then credit accounts receivable. Next is debit sales returns credit accounts receivable. So debit 320,000 pesos for sales returns then credit accounts receivable. Then last, debit accounts payable, then credit purchase returns and allowances for 80,000 pesos. So credit purchase returns and allowances, then credit account debit accounts payable, 80,000 pesos. Now, after we record the additional information, let us now check whether the beginning balances add all increases in, in each account, then less all decreases from each account will total the ending balance. So let us check. So for the cash, 1,600,000, so that is already the ending balance. For notes receivable, 400 beginning minus 960,000 pesos is negative 560,000 pesos. However, the ending balance based on the problem should be 1.2 million pesos, which means there is another entry affecting notes receivable by 1,200,000 plus 560, which is an increase in notes receivable of 1.76 million pesos. So there is another entry for notes receivable by debiting note receivable 1.76 million. So debit note receivable 1760. So what is the account credited? So the account credited is sales. So we assume that the transaction is related to a sale on account. However, there is an evidence of promissory note because in theory, notes receivable are normally used when there is a sales on account with a promissory note. Next, let's check the accounts receivable balance. The balance is a negative 1.94 million pesos. However, there should be an ending balance of 2 million pesos. So which means there is an additional transaction affecting accounts receivable. So we can have an ending balance of 2 million. And how much is it? It's 3.94 million. Which means there is an additional debit to accounts receivable at 3.94 million. So another journal entry must be made which is debit accounts receivable. Of course, the credit account is sales 
because accounts receivable is used for sales on account transactions. Then let's transfer this to our table. So we have, so for note receivable and accounts receivable, these are both sales or credit sales. The next, let's skip the merchandise inventory. Let's go to equipment. So equipment has a balance of 1.5 million. However, the ending balance net of accumulated depreciation should be 1.12 million pesos. So it means there is a decrease of 380,000 pesos. And what is the decrease of 380,000 pesos? for the carrying amount of equipment. So we can assume that this is a, the depreciation expense. So how do we record the depreciation expense? So debit, depreciation expense, credit, accumulated, depreciation. Or we can just use the account equipment since on our table, we are using only at carrying amount. So how much is our depreciation? 380,000 pesos. So let's transfer the depreciation expense on our table. So depreciation. The next is the notes payable. So the notes payable is... One mi uh, negative 560,000 pesos. For notes payable, we must have an ending balance of 480,000 pesos, which means there should be an increase of 1,040,000 pesos for notes payable, which is a credit. So the entry would be a credit to notes payable, 1,040,000 pesos. So the debit would be purchases. So our assumption is same with notes receivable. Notes payable is used for purchases on account as long as there is an evidence of a promissory note. So let's transfer 1,040 as purchases. So credit purchases. Now let's proceed to accounts payable. The account the accounts payable has a balance of negative four hundred thousand. However, the ending balance should be one million forty thousand pesos, which means there is an additional transaction affecting accounts payable at one million four hundred forty thousand pesos increase, which is a credit to accounts payable. So crediting accounts payable requires a corresponding debit to purchases because accounts payable is normally used for purchases on account. So 1,440,000 pesos. Now let's transfer this to purchases. So credit purchases. So the 1,040,000 pesos has a promissory note while the 1.44 million has no promissory note. Now, let's get the accrued interest payable. The balance is 80,000 pesos. But the ending balance should be 40,000 pesos, which means there should be a decrease of 40,000 pesos. If there is a decrease in accrued interest payable, a decrease in liability is a debit. So debit accrued interest payable for 40,000 pesos. The credit is interest expense. Remember, we cannot use the account cash anymore because these are only the cash transactions and we already determined the ending balance at 1.6 million pesos. So any entries here will not affect the cash account. So that is why we credited interest expense. This means there is an adjustment to 40 at 40,000 pesos. Now let's transfer interest expense. So this since credit since interest expense is credited, so positive 40,000 pesos. 
Now, let's proceed to unearned rent income. The unearned rent income has a balance of 120,000 unadjusted. However, the ending balance should be 40,000 pesos, which means there should be a decrease of 80,000 pesos. So a decrease means a debit to unearned rent income. So debit unearned rent income, 80,000 pesos. So credit rent income. So this means this is an adjustment to the unearned rent income account. So let's transfer this to our table. So rent income is credit. Then after all liabilities are done, Let's go back to Merchandise Inventory. So for Merchandise Inventory, the account has a 1.6 million balance, which is the beginning balance. However, we have an ending balance of 960,000 pesos. Since our Merchandise Inventory has a beginning balance of 1.6 million, and this remains to be ad unadjusted, so I will convert our table into perpetual inventory system because currently using purchases account this means we are using the periodic inventory system so to convert this into perpetual inventory system because i prefer to use the cost of sales account when preparing income statement so i will close all the purchases account net purchases to merchandise inventory so how much is our purchases? So we have credit purchases, we have cash purchases, we have purchase returns on allowances. So let's transfer this to the merchandise inventory account. So the total purchases is must be credited. Then the purchase returns and allowances returns and allowances must be debited so purchase returns and allowances is so purchases is three million eighty thousand pesos while purchase returns and allowances allowances is eighty thousand pesos so the amount to be transferred to merchandise inventory is three million so let us transfer purchases and purchase returns and allowances which is 3 million as a, as a credit because the net credit is 3 million then a debit to merchandise inventory also at 3 million so beginning balance plus 3 million net purchases is 4 million 600 thousand pesos and what is the 4.6 million pesos this is the cost of goods available for sale. However, the ending balance should be 960,000 pesos. So how much should be the cost of sale? So 960 minus 16 minus 3 million is 3,640,000 pesos. So this is the cost of sales. So let's prepare the entry for this. So debit cost of sales credit merchandise inventory for 3,640,000 pesos. Now the our table is now converted into perpetual inventory system by presenting the cost of sale account. So by getting the balances of all the revenues and expense accounts We have a 1,200,000 balance. And what is this? This is the net income. So if you remember, the net income computed under the single entry system is 1.2 million by squeezing this from the equity T account. So 1.2 million pesos. Then the 1.2 million pesos will be transferred to the Lancer Capital account as a closing entry so the Lancer capital account has an ending balance of so first let's 
put the beginning balance of the equity which is 3,880,000 pesos. So 3,880,000 pesos plus investment of 600,000 pesos less withdrawal of 400,000 pesos plus net income of 1.2 million pesos will give us uh, an ending balance of capital of 5.28 million pesos which is also our equity using the single entry method. So to check whether this will balance the total assets at the end is 6,880,000 pesos. Then the total liabilities and equity is also 6,880,000 pesos. Now let's prepare the income statement. So first, credit sales. How much is the credit sales? The credit sales is... 1.76 million plus 3.94 million so 5 million 700 so the cash sales is 800,000 pesos so we have a gross sales of 6.5 million pesos so less sales discounts do we have a sales discount our sales discount is 100,000 pesos do we have a sales returns and allowances? Sales returns and allowances is at 320,000 pesos. So our net sales is 6,080,000 pesos. Then cost of sales is 3,640,000 pesos. So we have a gross profit of 2,400,000 pesos. Then let's itemize all the expenses. First, the generic account expenses. Then bad debts, depreciation. Then interest expense. But first, let's add the other income. So other income, we have rent income. Our rent income is 80,000 pesos plus 80,000 pesos. So that is 160,000 pesos. Then we have a gain on sale of equipment for 20,000 pesos. So our total revenue is... 2,620,000 pesos. Now we can compute all the expenses. Expenses is 800. Bad debts is 120,000 pesos. Depreciation is 380,000 pesos. Interest expense is 160 minus 40,000 pesos. So 120,000 pesos. So the net income is 1,200,000. So net income. So this is our income statement for Lancer Company. So income statement for the year ended December 31, 2019.